Hello, everybody, and welcome to the week three edition of the Baseball Show. I am your host, Danny Roman, and this is the show that brings all the news from the latest week of the American Baseball Union straight to your computer. This week, our highlights are of a Pro Division flavor, as we were only able to record and take pictures of two Pro Division games. Week four will see us more than make up for that, as we will tape two marquee Elite Division matchups. Those matchups to be announced very shortly, but... You can rest assured that there will be somebody present at the Mustangs versus Hawks game. Let's take a look back at week number three. Right now, the primary news story is that the league is starting to come into focus after three games of play. We're starting to see which teams are on the higher level, which teams have some work to do, and we're starting to see the divisional battles that should take shape over the course of the season. We're going to start off with the Pro Division, and we're going to take a look at the theme of the season so far, which seems to be... Pro Division 2 dominance over Pro Division 1. Two undefeated teams in the Pro Division. Those are the Brewers. Those are the Matadors. Both of those teams in Division 2. So far, in the regular season matchups, Pro Division 2 has a 3-0 and edge over Pro Division 1. Another strong team in that division are the Hurricanes at 2-1. and one. And while the Knights are 1-2, and two, their two losses are against the Hurricanes and the Brewers. Over at Pro Division 1, the Dirty Beavers at 2-1 and one are in first place and control their own destiny. Their loss, however, was 9-1 to one against the Hurricanes, again establishing Division 2 dominance so far. In the game of the week, we had the Wolves and the Outfitters going at it. The Wolves had a huge lead in the 6th and 7th innings, but somehow... The Bandits, actually, not the Outfitters. The Bandits were able to come back and tie this game when DJ Pauly stole home plate in the ninth inning. Great game. The Wolves thought they had this game throughout. Somehow, the Bandits were able to make up. And now we have a, two teams of a 1-1-1 one, one, and one record. Other action of the week saw the Cobras and the Outfitters with the Outfitters earning their first victory of the season. We also saw the Brewers take out the Knights 5-2. to two. Some controversy there as far as the Brewers stealing signs from second base. Things got testy. At the end of the day, cooler heads prevailed and nothing else came of it. A big debate on the message board about whether or not stealing signs is a part of the game or stealing. Personally, I wouldn't want my team doing it in a rec league scenario. But I don't consider it cheating. I, I, it is an edge. Uh, don't let the other team get away with it is all I can say. Over in the Elite Division, again, another division that's starting to take shape a little differently than the Pro Division in that all eight teams are in the same division, so the dominance really resides from the top teams compared to the bottom teams. The top two teams in the league right now are the Hawks at 3-0 and and the Vegas Stars at 3-0, and two kind of different teams. Uh, one team is a veteran team in this league in the Hawks and that they have a lot of players that have been established in this league. The other one is built of young and up and comers, a little controversial, the Vegas Stars. They have a bunch of high school players, age 16, 17, 18. The league did give them approval to add these players. We weren't sure how many of these players would be added, but yes, approval was given as long as they had parental consent, which they do have. So the Stars are a legal team, very fundamental. Their new uh, coach is preaches the basics to this ball club. Tom Puccini is the GM of this squad. And again, they're playing very good baseball. The former champions, or should we say maybe the defending champions from the fall season, are the Mustangs at 2-1 and one, losing to the Vegas Stars. Some have questioned whether or not this team has started to slip from their dominance from last season, remembering that they were undefeated last season throughout the championship game. They did what the Patriots couldn't do in that they were able to win every game and win the championship. This year, 2-1, and one, some are questioning their offense, but what you cannot question about this team is their pitching with Kiyoki Wright. And with Justin Spurrier, they have one of the best one-two punches you'll see in a league like this. And as long as they have that pitching and Mike Finitari and the rest of his offensive squad hitting bombs, they can beat anybody. This week, they'll match up with the Hawks in what could be the marquee matchup of the season. I went out on a limb. I picked the Mustangs to win this. I picked their championship pedigree over the Hawks' inexperience as a full unit. We'll see what happens with that matchup. Again... Playoff scenarios being what they are, the top six teams make the playoffs. And two of the teams right now are 0-3, the Showboats and the Raptors. Oh, actually, the Rap Showboats are 0-2. They didn't get to play this week due to an MSBL tournament that eliminated Cheyenne High School from the fold this one week. But 
you know, the Showboats need to start winning. The Raptors need to start winning, and they need to start winning fast. We have a couple of teams in the Boulder Dodgers and the Las Vegas Dodgers that we're not too sure about. Both teams are one is one and two, the Boulder Dodgers. The other one is one and one of the Dodgers, the Las Vegas Dodgers. So we'll see how that goes. And then you take a look at a team like the Spartans, a championship team in the spring, a semifinal team in the fall. Right now, they're at one and two, and they have to find their footing to see what they, uh, what they can come up with. Um... You know, it's hard to say how far they're going to go. And Excuse me, I need to correct myself again as the Spartans are 2-1 losing to the Stars this weekend. Uh, but they haven't exactly been blowing teams out, so we've got to see what they're made of. Uh, we're coming up to the end of the program this week. A uh, little bit more information than I thought we were going to have, and it looks like we're going to come up a little bit short. So we'll have to make up for it in uh, week four, where we'll discuss the All-Star game. In two week four, I just want to say again, thank you to all the ABU members for being a part of this great league. Uh, without you, we'd be nothing, and all of you really should take the time to thank your managers who have worked really hard to put these teams together. I really feel the managers are under underappreciated. Uh, give them a thank you, and again, I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you to every single player in this league. Have a great week.